Kathleen, this is your cow bowl. It's utterly fabulous. <laughs> Hope you like it. This one's really nice. This is by one of my advanced students. Handles and rainbows and also the black and white contrast. That's very nice. Wow. The detail on this one is pretty awesome. Day and night. Lovely contrast. I say the word contrast a lot. This one's lovely. It's got flowers and this wind-blown fall creature. Oh, this one's super sweet. This is a lot of very detailed hard work by one of my students and she did all of this for her mommy. Inside it says, I love you. And on the outside it says, to mom. So sweet. Ha! So cute. Eee! Isn't that lovely? Ladybug bowl. I love it. It's hard. So red and green are technically complementary colors that should, you know, be bright and bold together, but a lot of times it looks Christmassy, and this person managed to make it not look Christmassy, which is cool. We got this eight ball bowl, billiard bowl. Okay, so next, now that I've emptied out the kiln, is we're going to put in the coil pot sculptures and get some of those going so the kids can start glazing those. We've not gotten all of the bowls glazed uh, and fired, um, but I don't have exactly a kiln load, just a smattering here. So um, while we're waiting for them to paint up the rest of the bowls will get these coil pots going. So I'll show you what they've been working on with that because they're pretty awesome. So with the recycled clay that I have been working on, uh, they have been making these amazing sculptures. Uh, the instructions were that they had to use the coil technique and we talked about the coil technique and how um, they had to score and slip the base uh, which means scoring is when you scratch the surface of the clay and then slip is the mud that you would put into those crevices that holds the two pieces together. They had to score and slip the base and then add coils which then have to be smoothed either on the inside or the outside to keep them together. And this is, oh, and then the other, the other requirement is that it has to hold water in the final piece. And I suggested a coffee mug or a tumbler or a flower vase, but you know, technical difficulties arise and with some people their intention might have been to start with one of those things, but then they realized the task was a little more difficult than they thought. And so they ended up with things other than that. But you know, we also have some pretty awesome coffee mugs and tumblers and vases. And, and then we have other things like that. That is a vase, but it's also a face. It's a vase face, or um, we call them face jugs. And it is a Appalachian tradition to make face jugs. And this student, um, her family has a bunch of face jugs at their house and really appreciate them and she wanted to make one and she actually I heard her say that she wishes that that could be her job was just to sit around and do that all the time and I said it can be might not make a lot of money but that is someone's job and it can be your job So as you can see from my progress so far, uh, loading the kiln is a bit of a Tetris game. The advantage with the bisque fire from greenware to bisque is that things can touch each other. It gets much more complicated when you get to the glaze fire because these things cannot 
touch each other or they will fuse together with liquid glass. So I'm going to keep working and I'll show you the layers as I go. All right, here's the second layer. Got stuff inside stuff and stuff propped up on stuff and hopefully it will go all right. We've got this little guy we gotta fit in there. Hello. He's been, so you can't, there's a rule of thumb is what I call it where uh, you can't have anything thicker than a thumb. So they hollowed him out. So I think he's gonna be all right. Okay, so um, I have gotten everything in there, including my little horse with the broken legs that's been the kiln god. We're gonna go ahead and fire him. And I had these posts here in order to put an extra layer, but I'm not sure we need it because the only thing that's left to go in there is my daughter's ring toss game and her little beads that she made. And I think if I can get this largest piece to go in somewhere, then um, I can fit it all in there. So I'm gonna try that and then we'll be ready to go. All right, she made it in with her ring toss game. I just shifted things around because remember that they can touch. So all of her rings are in those cups and shoved my horse over and her ring toss game is right there. So we are loaded up and ready to go. I have put the cone in the pyrometer and you can see that that is holding down this lever. This goes all the way through and is propped up by the cone. When the cone falls, this will lift up and this will fall down. So the only thing I have left to do to turn the kiln on is to push that button, the light comes on, and there's three sections. So what we do to begin, especially with recycled clay and children's sculptures, is you turn on the bottom section to low, you leave all the peepholes open, and you have a little prop thing here, and I'm not going to be able to do this one-handed because this is a thing. Um, hold on, bear with me. i got to lift this arm. Now, I'm going to bring the lid down. And we're propping up the lid. I'm going to keep the kiln open, propped open and candling overnight. Um, and this is still morning, so we're talking about a whole 24 hours until I get here tomorrow morning. Uh, normally, that's not necessary. With bisqueware, you just candle overnight for like 10 hours. Uh, but we're talking about recycled clay. We're talking about children's sculptures. Some of them are definitely thicker than a thumb in some places. Um, we're talking about possible trapped air bubbles. We're talking about possible, I know a lot of that stuff was not dried out completely. Some of it they just finished yesterday. So, so I'm really almost sort of gambling here, but none of the bowls that Meg made are in here. The, the empty bowls are not in this firing. This is just sculptural stuff. So if something explodes, it will not affect our empty bowls banquet and that effort. This is all just secondary stuff, but also a lot of hard work by my students. So I'm taking it seriously. So we're candling for 24 hours to make sure that all the, the um, moisture is out of there. And then we're going to ramp up really slowly from low to medium to high tomorrow. So this is going to be a full 48 hour firing in order to make sure that that stuff is cured and not going to explode. Okay.